Listen, I, I know why you're here, okay? I do. You need help with naming assets and bases. Don't we all? The thing is, you probably looked at my naming and asset and basis video before, and you went, holy crap, the picture quality is worse than a real piece of crap. I'm not gonna watch this. Because that's what I do every time I see that. Now, I guarantee you that my picture quality problems are solved, which is why I'm bringing to you live naming assets and bases, second edition for free, just for you. Actually, let's be honest, it's for me. I just, I'm too obsessive compulsive. So here it is, naming assets and bases, the exact same help, but with better picture quality. Let's do this. Behold, we have a list of acids. Now the official definition of an acid is something that releases hydrogen in water. Now if you don't agree with that, I don't actually care because that's what I teach my junior high students. So if we were actually going to name these homeboys, this is where we'll start. You first need to give it to its ionic name. So for this one, it's hydrogen sulfide. Totally easy. Now, we could name this acid aqueous hydrogen sulfide because remember it's in water. We just need to write this aqueous down. But of course, we have to make it sound all cool and scientific and we have to learn rules about how to name it like a classic acid. So for whatever reason, we're going to do that. Now, as mentioned in the definition, hydrogen is always going to be a part of an acid. But what we focus on is the ending. Boom. Now, as seen in this case, the ending is IDE. But the other thing, the other focus here is this section here. You see, this is an acid that happens to contain sulfur. This is our root. This is very key. This is our blank which you'll understand soon as we give it a classic acid name and it'll follow this template if it has the correct ending. So if we have an ionic compound and it has an IDE ending like we see here, then we will have the following classic name written out as such. Hydro blank ick acid. Oops, sorry about cutting off the D, but you know what? I think you know what I was trying to write. So here's our template. Now what we do is we focus on the root. So we have an ionic compound. What is the blank? We have to transplant whatever this is here into the template. Now the best thing about this template is if it ends in IDE, you'll use that one. Okay? IDE hydroblankic acid. Uh, you will probably be given this template. If not, I suggest memorizing it. So what is the name of this thing? We need to transplant the blank or the root, which is sulfur, into this. And we name it hydrosulfuric acid. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's all like, wait a second. That sulfur is spelled differently. Well, you know what? Just like if you've ever tried learning English as a second language, it's riddled with exceptions. Sulfur is just one of those deals. You have to put that extra UR there. So hate me if you want. Actually, hate the English language. Don't hate me. Uh, we have our template. Put the blank in the template. That's all you need to do. So what you need to do is recognize which template to use. So let's move on to the next one. Now, I tell my students a Levitt guarantee that if a compound like this one has more than two elements, you are most likely dealing with a polyatomic ion. And then you would name it, you know, the specific way that you would any other ionic compound just with a polyatomic ion. So this one is named aqueous hydrogen sulfate with the ending A-T-E and the root or blank of sulfur again. So now you look on your formula sheet for your template provided, or if you have to memorize it, and it should be blank ick acid. Now again, if it ends in A-T-E, you take the root of salt and put it in the template. Same thing as before, but it just has a different ending, so it tells you to do something different. Now it's named sulfuric acid. Now it has the same exception. You have to write sulfur, not sulfate. It's not sulfic acid, but you just focus on this template. 
So what I hope you're understanding now is that naming acids and bases is just satisfying conditions. Look at the ending and put the friggity fella blank into the appropriate template. Okay, let's do this next one. Faster now! Hydrogen sulfite is the ionic name. Oh, aqueous, it's in water. Don't want to forget that. People will hate me for it. Ending, I-T-E. The root of this bad boy is still the same thing. So, in the event that you have an I-T-E ending, and it's an ionic compound, and it has hydrogen, then the classical name must be blank oath acid. Isn't that nice now? Now, people, it's the same thing. You take the roots, and you put it right here. Now, it should be saying something along the lines of sulfurous acido. I'm getting so pumped up that we just finished another one, and we have our third template. Congratulations. Now, to celebrate, I think I'm going to drink this Dr. Pepper, because I like it. Beautiful. Now, this is pretty advanced. See this A-T-E ending? So this is sulfate right here. This is referred to as the reference anion. Anion meaning negatively charged. And when we mess around with the number of oxygens, we're going to add some different prefixes to the template. So what I want you to focus on is the difference in the number of oxygens in any sort of acid. Now in this case, we have uh, this compound that has five oxygens compared to the four in our reference anion. Now if you see that, you add the prefix per, and the template is just the same, like I just wrote down, per blankic acid. It's just like blankic acid, but per is now there. And this per literally means it has one more oxygen than the reference ion, which is why you start with sulfate. And in conclusion, we would name this per sulfuric acid. And I know you can see that because guess what? The picture quality is better, dog. Now watch this tricky trick. If in the event that you have a wicked low amount of oxygens than your reference anion, see, check it out, I have four. And see, if you have one less, then you'd say eight, okay? Eight, not eight. But if you have two less than the reference anion, so we have two oxygens in the sulfate, then we'd go hypo blank os acid. Now, now, now what we've gone done here is we've made two brand new templates. Well, technically they're not new. We just added these two prefixes. But you get what I mean. Per meaning add oxygen, hypo meaning subtract. Now, pay attention. Through the glory of technology, boom, technology. Okay, prepare yourselves. We've been going at impulse power here. For these examples, we're going to go minimum warp 5.3. Hold on to your butts. All right, let's first write down the ionic name of this thing. This is hydrogen chloride. All right, now you pick the right template, which is hydroblankic acid, and you fill in the root, hydrochloric acid. Next, let's write down the ionic compound. It looks like a polyatomic ion, hydrogen chlorate. Look at the ending, A-T-E, pick the template, ic acid, chloric acid is the name. Next, this one's ionic name, hydrogen chlorite. The ending, I-T-E, brings the template, blankus acid, chlorous acid. The end technology. Okay, let's make this quick. There are no special templates. There are no special naming rules that you haven't already covered when naming bases. You just need to understand the definition. The, the definition of a base is something that releases hydroxide, polyatomic ion, in water. So kind of like acids, but you know, but this is base. But because there's no special naming rules, you just need to name this like you would any other ionic compound. There's the name of the metal, magnesium. It's not multivalent, so you don't have to worry about the stock system. Magnesium, this is called hydroxide. And you're done. And just for extra flavor, why don't you just go aqueous? Sure, why not? Aqueous magnesium hydroxide. This is a base, and that's all you got to know. I certainly hope that this helped. I know I'm enjoying the picture quality. 
Adieu.